Big thanks to Napoleon Grills for sponsoring this episode. I absolutely fell in love with this recipe and I just wish I could eat it every single day. Every day? Every day. I have enough meat. Another one, and another one, and another one, and another one. Another one. But then you have to cycle more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely more exercise. You know, remember you did cycling? Look. But uh that's how I solve my problems. Magic. It all starts with this beautiful pork roast. This comes from my own pigs that have been raised in my own garden and they've been grown nice and fat and very, very tasty. And now I can have them on my cutting board ready to be eaten. We're gonna do something special this time. This is basically the same thing as a beef T-bone roast. And the pork meat is beautiful red of color with a nice thick fat cap sitting on top of it. The first thing that I'm gonna do is make incision right here all the way to the backbone. Basically, I'm creating pork chops which are still attached with a nice little gap in between. And the more incisions in the meat, the better this recipe gets. You wanna check the cuts to see if they've gone through nice and opened enough gap for you to put something in it. Something in it? Yeah. There we go. Check, check, yes. This is ready. Oh, look at that. It's like a wave. Pork roast like this needs a lot of flavor. And that's why we're going to use a barbecue rub. And we need a lot of it to make sure everything is covered and everything tastes freaking delicious. And of course I'll be using my Pitmaster's Classic Barbecue Rub, which is made out of two tablespoons of table salt, two tablespoons of paprika powder, two tablespoons of onion powder, half a tablespoon of garlic powder, and then just mix it up and it's ready to go. And of course I will be seasoning all sides of my roast, so the rub goes in between the slices of meat that I just created, as well as on the bottom, on the top. You wanna hit all sides, maximizing the amount of flavor you're adding to the roast. Once you got the whole roast covered, it's time for the next phase to add flavor. Yes, I'm not gonna stop until I add the most flavor that I can to this roast. And for me, it starts with a slice of beautiful young Gouda cheese. The best export product out of the Netherlands, so make sure you get your hands on some. I'm gonna lay down a slice of it, put on a slice of ham, two slices of chorizo, and then I'm going to fold it up and stick it into my pork roast. Jam it in there as deep as you can, and then continue that process until you filled up the whole roast. Of course, I want my floppy bits to stay where they are, so I'm gonna stick in a skewer and connect all the parts. If I put it straight up like this on the bones, it's gonna be ruined because all the cheese is gonna drip out. So what I want is the cheese to drip over the roast, and then I'm gonna place it like this, and then it's going to melt like one big toasty while the pork is cooking. And this is gonna be so freaking amazing, but I'm not gonna tell you just yet. First thing that we need to do is now to get our barbecue hot and start cooking this thing. And this is the beast that I will be using. This is the Napoleon Prestige Pro 665. This thing is an absolute monster built into my beautiful kitchen. Indirect heat to cook this roast. I don't need it to be grilled at the moment. I just need warmth coming from all sides, warming this thing up. So let's turn on the outside burners. Of course, <laughs> of course this might be handy to open the gas bottle first. And what I never do, but you should do, is fire up the barbecue with the lid open. So you won't have any weird explosions or stuff like that. We're going to let it come up to temperature, but we're also gonna put in the roast right now. There we go. Then close the lid and let the roast come up to temperature. The cheese is melting. The chorizo is crispening up. Look at that, drizzling cheese. Wow. And the core temperature, of course, is rising as well, which means we are ready for the next phase of this cooking process. And therefore, I'm gonna need a huge pan. In this case, I'm using my favorite Scottsburg pan. It is a giant pan that I can put a whole roast in and it's steel. I'm gonna take this pan, put it underneath the roast, and that's basically gonna be my oven tray because I'm gonna put on a whole pack of butter. I'm just gonna let it sit there and baste the roast. Of course, I'm also gonna add some chives, some garlic, a little bit of lemon juice, and some of that Pitmaster X classic barbecue rub. I'm gonna close the lid and let that melt. 
You ready to go? Because it's time to butter it up. Let's put that butter on because this is our basting pan. It's gonna heat things up, a little bit of flames everywhere. And that's what this butter is supposed to do in this pan. It's a dripping pan for the fat rendering down from the pork and it's a dripping pan for all of that butter and the herbs to be put back on the roast, create a really nice crispy exterior and add more flavor to our recipe. Now the roast is done, we got plenty of flavor on, time to take it off the grill and take a closer look. Let's take the pins out. Just take a look at how delicious this is. The outside crispened up, beautiful roasted, plenty of color, crispy chorizo, and as juicy as can be. Now you want it, I want it. I'm gonna start by cutting into the back and separating the meat from the bones. Look at that, all those juices going over. I'm not gonna let anything go to waste here. Look at that. And these bones are gonna go to my favorite doggy. It's yours if you want it, otherwise I'm giving it to the chicken. I'm giving it to, for real. There you go, see? It could be yours. Now it's for the chicken. You just want it because I gave it to the chicken. So good. I need me a slice of that. Let's go with me. With my hands, go and go in. It's still a bit hot. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh. Mm. Look at that. We got pork, we got juiciness, we got crispiness. This roast is so delicious. You definitely need to give it a try. It's easy to make. It is cheaper than beef. It is very, very tasty. And you can share it with loads of people. So what's not to like? Mm.